So if you'd like to speak with Babaji, you can let me know via the chat or you can type me a question or a comment and I will relay it to Babaji. And Baba, there's two comments in the chat already that I just wanted to share. One was, thank you, Babaji, your teachings have changed my life. And the other is, on this Father's Day, I'm grateful that I had a role model in my father who woke up each day thinking about what he could do for others. I appreciate Baba's reminder, this is what we should do. I am so grateful for Babaji and also the great fathers around us. We are truly blessed. And then another, uh, Babaji on this Father's Day, if there was ever there was good advice that a father could give to his children, I can't imagine any other better life advice than what you just gave us today. I am grateful beyond words for your presence in my life. And Pranam Babaji, thank you so much. Let's hear about Tyag. Did anybody have any experience of Tyag? Catching yourself giving up something or catching yourself flowing towards something that you have already given up. Okay, I won't put you on the spot. <laughs> you know what, what you have to do. Anybody has any questions about today? The right bhav? That's also pretty established. We all know we have to have right sentiment. Baba, I just wanted to underline something that you said, because uh, it just really, that bow your inner disposition is at the root of everything and every experience. Yes. Glass is half empty or half full? Baba, Baba I have a question. Um, when we have an experience of bow and and are and feel like we're in that right place um can you speak on what takes us away from that habit habit of the mind mind always flows towards that which is comfortable that's familiar and when we are practicing these kind of things with a mindfulness, it requires catching ourselves and not start flowing because mind comes with that. That's more comfortable. It will find more excuses and reasons and everything to take us back to that place. You know, just look at this. Some people are, we miss some things. We even miss people who are in our life. We know that they have moved on, but we keep missing. It's very, very common. We all do. It's very human to miss, to remember those times and those moments. Mind has had good, good moments. And it's good to miss, it's, but not really remain there all the time. The feeling of missing is also there and the feeling of celebration is also there. It is what it is. 
How, what are you going to do with it? There are some people who are not in my life anymore. And speaking of that, I just, uh, my oldest brother just passed away last week. And his whole life went before my eyes. What a great life he had. And yes, I miss him. But I also am in remembrance of the kind of life he lived and what a great gift he was to all who came near him. So mind will go to what is familiar and then you have to just do the shifting of its attention. Babaji, I have a question. Yes, Surja. Uh, you know what you said about that when you say, how can I make somebody happier or how can I do something that helps somebody? And that's a beautiful sentiment, but sometimes we can get um, a little carried away or we might do something where we think we're doing that for that person, but actually maybe it's not really uh, making a difference to them or maybe that's also not important. Maybe it's more about, um, I'm trying to explain. Sometimes we can't make them happy. They are not happy. You know, and you think you've been tasked with doing whatever you need to be doing, but sometimes you just, they have other reasons they're not happy, but they, they blame you or they don't blame you, but they expect you to step up to the table. And so how, how do you recognize that? And how do you handle that before, you know, the intention becomes uh, misguided? You do your best what you think you what you think that you need to do. And you do that. Whether they become happy or not happy, that's not your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Your responsibility is doing your part, doing your uh, doing the right action. And you're not coming from a place of malice. You're not coming from a place of um, being clever. You're just doing, it comes from your inner being that this is what my dharma is that I can do. And that's all you can do. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. Baba, there is a Tiag uh, report in the chat. And it said, uh, I tried to give up the critical mind and didn't succeed. Today's gift from you makes the mind hard shift easier, so it seems. Even recognizing that you didn't succeed, you moved in that direction. Don't take it as a failure. Take it as at least you made an effort. At least you cut yourself. So that's a little small movement in that direction. If we are not committed to moving in that direction, then we'll look at it with a negative attention that, oh, I did it, but I didn't succeed. I would say, at least you made an effort. And, and you didn't succeed, you acknowledge that. You did not justify that, why didn't I succeed? You didn't blame it on someone. You made the effort and that's good enough. Next time you try, maybe you'll come a little closer. So please don't give up. The questions are coming in, Babaji. Uh, the next one is, I find that the more established I get in this teaching, the more I notice when another is not. And that makes it challenging to find a place of sincere connection. Could you say something about this? Keep your attention on yourself, not on the other. That's it. 
the more we look at the other, keep looking at yourself, keep looking at yourself. And if you succeed, it will have an impact on the other sooner or later. Uh, the next question, Baba, is Babaji, it seems like sacrifice or resolution of some sort is needed to cultivate and maintain Bao along with the correct attitude about it. Without making lifelong commitments to our resolutions or sacrifices, is there any other possibility to develop the correct Bao and maintain it throughout life? It's the sacrifice that really makes your life shine. Small little sacrifices, start with a small one. That's what creates, is sacrifice is just another form of austerity. And austerity has a great place in all great traditions. Austerity, you know, like the yogis lying on bed of nails and sitting in a cave and doing all these things. But this, these, making these little resolutions to yourself and not playing as a victim, but as a um, making it a part of your practice is a great sadhana for this day and age. So I look at this sacrifice not in a negative way, but I look at it in a positive way. Any small little sacrifices we make, it brings tenfold to us. Someone came to me the other day and says, oh, I was really feeling great and I was going to treat myself to a very nice dinner. And, but then the thought came in, you know what, all the money that I'm going to spend on my dinner, I'm just going to buy something with that and feed homeless people. And she so must have mentioned it to me at least five times just one incident, how much she got out of that. Made a little sacrifice that day, didn't go to treat herself to this nice dinner, but that little sacrifice has given her so much that she need, still remembers and talks about it. So our little sacrifices always come back and give us much more than what we have. If we don't make that sacrifice, we satisfy our ego for a short time and then it's satisfied and gone, moved on to something else. But if we make that sacrifice, something else happens. There's another Tiag report, Babaji. I paid attention to the little criticisms and corrections on my partner's comments when the facts were wrong. I caught myself many times and shifted to not saying anything. This simple action created a more peaceful week. Thank you, Babaji. Keep catching yourself. <laughs> and uh, Ambika would like to share something. Yes, Ambika. And I'm Babaji. Um, Thinking about what you said about your brother and how he touched everyone in his life. I was at a memorial yesterday um, for a woman I went to high school with. And every, I was on the Zoom, every person that shared said they felt like Kath, that, that they were Kathy's best friend. That she, the way she showed up, her presence gave them the feeling that she was there for them totally and that she was the best friend. The amazing thing about this woman is she lived for 17 years after having a double lung transplant. So she had many, many challenges, health challenges, but she was never a victim. She was always there for others and she is a great inspiration 
to me of, of how someone can show up for other people and be there for other people. I just wanted to honor, honor her and honor um, the effort that I will make in her memory to show up that way. Thank you, Andika. Yes, people always say the nice things in the funeral. If they were just half nicer while they're alive. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for being present. And um, please remember, these are the simple little things I throw at you. You can either just listen and let it go or just take something from today's teaching and bring it into practice just and catch yourself. And once you have brought it into your practice and you have felt it and experienced it, then it all makes sense. It all becomes meaningful. Thank you very much, wherever you are. Just let's take a moment to settle down. Close your eyes. Connect with the breath. Infuse the feeling of gratitude, gratefulness in this breath. And remind yourself this coming week, you will pay attention to your bow. Just give yourself a little assignment for this week ahead. Right inner disposition, right attitude. not only with others, with yourself too. Not criticize yourself, but instead of criticism, just say, I am going to practice. I am capable of doing this. I will do this. I bow to that divine essence in you and thank you for being here. Please say hi to each other, connect with each other. See you next week. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Thank you.